Hello everybody, Foo here, and today we are going to be celebrating that knowledge is overpowered in our final and third part, the toss items of our item guide. Okay, so starting off again, uh, the warp out. Um, the warp out is exactly like drop pod and nidus worm. Always have it. Always have it. There's Moving one... on, we have energy crystals, the protoss consumable item. It is arguably, and in my opinion, the best it is. You can pretty much get it for any hero that's going to be casting spells. It's particularly effective for heroes with low energy pools. Like, like this, this bad guy. boy here with his ancients. Well, you don't Up have the five, ancients, but... Five strategy with immortal, warp out. By speed and energy crystals, go back to lane. Profits. Yeah. Because you can just keep casting it over and over and over. Same with DT. It's just good overall for heroes with cheap spells and low energy pools. Better than buying energy upgrades. And it's still not bad for heroes with high energy pools. Yeah. So, moving on, we have the Observer, which I would argue uh, is the best, cl yeah, because... Protoss Detection, you, arguably the best. You, you can set up a large amount of map missions. Cloak, and you put them everywhere on the map for detection. Yeah. They're easy to kill if they're seen, but since they're cloaked, uh, quite often they won't be seen, and you'll have plenty of vision. Um, next, we have Warp Gate, which is the toss method of fast travel. It's second best. It's better than Terran's because you only have to buy it once and then you can keep porting back to buildings. But there's the important things are it requires that you have buildings to port to, so don't go losing your defenses and then expecting a warp gate to help you. And it's uh, it has a 60 second cooldown, so you can't just go back whenever you want. Now you can go back also, every 60 seconds, it's still fine. There, there is a warp gate fairy that will put it down while you're in lane. If you stay in lane long enough, only yeah, if you're in a warp game gate with fairy food. will come and uh, put warp gates for you to use. Uh, and then everyone will get mad at you for using the warp gates. Like, the warp gate fairy le left them for all, so just ignore that. Yeah, most people are of the opinion that there's a warp gate fairy, um, but don't believe it. But anyway, here is the one reason why warp gates can actually be better than Nidus Canals, because with Obelisks, you can teleport them anywhere on the map that you have vision, and in Warp Gates, you can instantly port them there. So all you need is an Observer giving vision into their base, a lot of warp gates, and suddenly you have an all-in backdoor. With the Nidus Canal, you'd actually have to get a hero into their base and not just next to it. Okay. So next we have Energy Prisms, which are not a terrible defensive structure. They do a lot of damage, considering. Um, the only problem is they're very easy to kill, so you shouldn't really be putting them in your lane. And they have energy, so if they're, you know, waste all the energy shooting things, and then somebody comes along and wrecks them, they're not going to actually attack back. Yep. As with most of the Protoss items, it is second best, in my opinion. Next we have Obelisks, which are also second best. They heal shields. They can actually be kind of helpful early on, especially for a hero that's mostly shields, like Archon or Immortal. Yeah. I uh, would never get more than one, and honestly, I'd be hesitant about that. Use it only if you're really losing your lane, being poked to death. Say there's a medic or a fire bat poking the hell out of you. Yeah. That's what I would get. The major advantage is that they heal buildings, and they can teleport. So, mm -hmm. um... You wanna... And we have the build production facility and spawn units, which, as with the other races, almost almost never ever ever use these. There are a few situations where you would with spawn units. If you're getting buildings killed by creep wave alone, then spawn creeps to save them. Maybe you've got a big creep block going, spawn waves as soon as you release it. But most of the time, don't even bother. Yeah, then we have basic creep ups, weapons, and armor level one. Uh, they help you push lanes. They can push lanes against enemy creep if there's no heroes around. Uh, overall, they just give you a little more map control because they can push themselves, and it's slightly helpful to you in a lane. Next, we have what I think is most important, anti-hero ups. They will prevent your creep play from being AOEable. I think it's less important for uh, Protoss because you are already very resistant to yeah. AOE, but still great to have because it will make... Yeah. Make your creep better against heroes, which always comes in handy. To put it in perspective, if you get two levels of anti-hero, three quarters of your creep wave is going to survive against any AOE from, well, a Nova from Toss, which is huge. <laughs> and next we have, oh, one thing I will actually point out. Okay. That we have left out of every single video, Gasp, if there is a DAM or other unit 
taking units. Yes. It not always a good idea to get creep ups because that will buff their MC. Yeah, and 40% plus the scaling, uh, his creeps are going to hurt. To destroy so you. Be careful. So be careful. Especially as toss, you don't need the any hero ups just to keep your creeps from getting AoE'd all the time. So health. maybe don't buy them. So be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next we have and finally we have stat ups. Very simple. If you have money and nothing to spend it on, yeah, get stat ups. them. All right. Then we have the basic uh, hero ups again: energy, armor, and attack. Uh, as always, attack and energy over armor. They give you. This is the way to upgrade your hero. Uh, there's really not much to say about them. They just upgrade your base stats, and it tells you exactly what they do. As always, there is exception. Like, sometimes you do need to get armor, especially if you're in Shimato. Yes. You might want to get, you get armor, as much armor as you can. Get armor situationally, whenever you need One it. One thing to note is it will increase the same amount of effectiveness with every upgrade, but the price increases. Yes. Alright. So it starts at 200, then it jumps up 300 to 500, then it jumps up 400 to etc. And with our final building, we have passive and spell items. Starting off with V... Quantum Processor is basically a stat up that only costs 25 minerals, but it takes up an inventory space. So basically, if you have money, inventory room. Early game. Get. Yeah. It's good. Uh, then the Sensor Array, also important uh, for toss against DA. Otherwise, uh, it's, a, it's one of those Quantum Processor type things. You buy it if you have space because it's cheap and it has some use, but mostly against DA. Next, we have Gravatic Boosters. The toss speed item, very, very important. Yeah. Avoid ganks, help you gank, etc. It's pretty self-explanatory. Speed is good. And next we have Power Field, which is a very interesting item. It will increase your regen of all the units around you for shields by one every second. Most of the time this isn't a very useful item, but getting it for Mortal or Archon or Dark Archon will be very good. It's worth having instead of the regen item, but waking you won't have it. An interesting strategy. If you're pro. If you have power field, you can power your cannons up with power field if you're pro. Yeah. Which is a nice feature, but... Uh... In fact, one time as a mortal, there was a very annoying Void Ray back dooring who killed all of our pylons a long time ago. And then I finally got there to get there and stop him. And all my cannons powered on and just killed him. Mm -hmm. So it can come in handy. Uh, next we have Citrus. Um, this is one of those items that you just say, just buy it. It speeds your time scale by 20% for 15 seconds. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what that means, it means you move 20% faster, your cooldowns come back 20% faster, you attack 20% faster. It's just a really, really good item. And it doesn't cost you yeah. any energy, it's 200 minerals, just buy it. Buy it. Always buy it. It's great for if you have a really long cooldown spell and you need it. It's great for if you're being ganked and you need more speed. It's great if you're ganking and you need more attack speed and speed. It's just really yeah. good. Moving on, we have Life Crystals, the region item for Protoss. Do not. Least important do for not Protoss. Buy. Just do not buy it. Your shield to regen about as quickly anyway. I mean, certain circumstances, yes. Only early game, most of the time, no. Yeah. Next, we have Hardened Shields, which is actually a very useful item in a lot of situations. Uh, it increases damage reduction of shields by 36%, 18% for Archons and the Immortal. Um, but that's actually a huge uh, benefit. The only problem is it only affects shields, so if your shields are gone, you're not getting anything out of it. Yep, I'd say any hero that's expecting to take damage, especially if it's got the 50-50 shield differential. Like, if you'll notice, some heroes have, like, Immortal, which is a bad example because it has hardened shields, but it is 100 shields and 200 life, whereas Dark Templar is 100 shields, 150 life, and something like High Templar is 100 shields and Yeah, life. so the more shields you have to life, the better Hardened Shield is going to be for you. Yeah, I'd say any hero that's expecting to take damage, tanky or pseudo-tanky, get it. Okay, so next we have the Interceptor. I, I just don't buy it unless in very special circumstances. What it? Yep, and here is that specific circumstance. Passive high ground. Ah, uh, yes. Position. So if you were on forest or something with a high ground spot and you needed to see up there, Interceptor does give you vision of it. Um, uh, Honestly, if you're walking through the woods on forest map, because that vision can yeah. be tricky, it's like having an air unit over your head so you can see through the forest. Otherwise, though, um, 
Otherwise, yeah. no, it's not. No, don't, don't eat now. <laughs> All right. So next we have Protoss Relic, which gives you a 15% chance to deal double damage. It's uh, basically a crit item, and um. It increases your DPS, but it's a lot riskier than Cellular Reactor. Cellular Reactor will always work. Uh, Protoss Relic is kind of hit or miss, because it's a chance. But also it can, because it's a chance, it can be more yeah. effective than Cellular Reactor. So Reactor's. it averages out. Um, it's a 15% increase to DPS, so uh, you should probably buy it if you're a really high damage hero. Or if you're Stalker. Yeah. Uh, Stalker needs all the DPS and get. Next, we have Distortion Field, which gives the hero a 15% chance to avoid damage hey. and a 100% chance to die. It certainly auto seems that way, Boo. Uh, if, you, if you're against any hard-hitting spells, you're just never going to get hit by it. So buy, dis die, buy no. Distortion Field. No. No, I can't really recommend this no. item for more than a few heroes. It uh, seems to dodge all the Yamatos, but it's not that much of an improvement, and often you have better items to choose from. And next we have Plasma Surge, a very good item. It will AoE increase a lot of shields, 50 plus 5 for level, to any allied unit in the air. Yeah, very, this is very, very good for units that get most of their hit points from shields, like Immortal. And also... Yep, Immortal does have a lot of damage reduction, 60 to be exact. More with Hardened Shield item. Every Plasma Surge is like giving it 200 yeah. life. So it's very, very strong on Immortal. It's actually the least powerful on Archon. Or yeah, Dark because Archon. it doesn't really Because do with Hardened Shields, it will be less overall. Yeah. It's also good if you're against Toss and your DA and you want to, you know, heal your army. It's ridiculous, actually. Um, yep. If you have energy to cast it, definitely get it. Next we have Soul Channel, which is such a good item. I wish more people yes. would use it. It drains 60 life and gives it to you as life, not shields. Yeah. It's... Over time, it's got... You need to be within an, a fairly fairly short range. A range of, let's 13. see here... 13! 9. <laughs> but then they need to get out of a space of 13 in order to yeah. cut it off. It's... So this is a very good poke early game. In fact, it counters poking too. So my advice... Some heroes, the second I have 400 minerals, I come back, I get a warp gate, and I get soul channel, and if someone's poking the heck out of me, I can poke the heck out of them back and recover. It's especially them. abusive Very with mobile or hard to kill heroes like DT, DZ, because DT can cloak and then hit people with it, and DZ can just blink after them and make sure it never misses any of the damage. Also, fun fact, if you're getting a hero that can stun you, you use soul channel, you get stunned, they will not be able to warp back while you're stunned because they're still taking damage, which can make a big difference. In the uh, okay, next we have Disruption Web, the best anti-air item because the other ones are terrible. Um, this basically brings them to, gr to the ground four or five seconds. Now, if they're already on the ground, it doesn't work, but if they are in the air, it roots them for five seconds, and most air heroes, that's long enough to kill them. Yep, but they can still shoot. It's very good against any flying hero. Only get it if you're against something that's really quick, kind of squishy, like, say, Muta, Void Ray, Phoenix kind of okay. thing. And next we have Stasis Field. Stasis Field is an AoE stun. It does not care about lever bonus. It does not care about what the units inside are. It's a five-second stun. You cannot target them while they're inside it. However, this is good because you can cut off different chunks of the team, or you can Stasis people in your back dooring. It's just a... It's good for a getaway. Late game, almost every hero should have this. Say if there's a hero you want to gank, you stasis it, ping madly, all your heroes flock to it by the time it gets unstunned and the hero's just dead. Or say you're probe or something, you're about to get gank stasis, free getaway. If you're going into back door, all the heroes come to stop you while you're stasis. It's really good. And fun fact, for probes, since the cooldown is really short... <laughs> you just do it again? And again. It's very, very, very yeah. effective. Um, finally, we have Energy Nova, which is the Toss AoE. It's the most user-friendly, and it does a lot of damage versus not upgraded creeps. Now, it only does 60 damage, so if they do buy anti-hero ups, it loses effectiveness. But multiple Novas will solve that problem. Also very good against Zerglings. Looks a little bit like this. Yeah. And he'll never be able to cast it again. Uh, it feels good to cast Energy Nova as Immortal. But anyway guys, this is our final part 
to the energy god. Remember that knowledge is overpowered, nothing else. But I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, this is Fu. And this is Earth, signing off.